Okay, where are all the foxy lovers out there? Never mind. Today it's time for the Long Ring Longland arc. Manga chapters 303 to 321 and anime episodes 207 to 290. Let's go! Before going back to the Straw Hats happily flying in their balloon, we have to quickly go back to Jaya first, where Bellamy is being confronted by none other than Doflamingo. Because apparently he was under his command before and disobeyed some orders, and also disgraced his flag. And Bellamy was now begging for another chance, and offered to follow him from now on. This Bellamy character is only getting lower for me, as he's just as pathetic as ever. The flamingo on the other side looks crazy and also refused to have him in his crew, so I already like him. But we'll talk about him more later in the future. Okay, back to the ship. I love that we could see that everyone is still reflecting on Skype and how surreal it felt to have been in a place like that. But if they have one proof that it was in fact real, it's this. And now they have to decide how they want to spend it. And it was surprisingly Nami's idea to use it on repairing the Mary. Of course, I really wasn't taking this too seriously because I thought they were just gonna do something stupid with it and waste it all. But when she said that, it felt like the most obvious and logical thing to do. Finally, real repairs for the Mary. No offense to soap. And then Luffy adds that in that case, they need a carpenter as well. It's an essential skill they require, since the Mary is their home and life, so they need a carpenter in the crew to protect their ship. That was beautifully said. When he's right, he's right. And then he mentioned he wants a musician as well. You know, he has been saying that from the start, even before a cook, so it must be really important to him. Never took Luffy for the musical kind of guy, although he did look really happy when he was singing that awesome song back in the Sky Puy Forest. So now they're going to get a new crewmate. That is so exciting. I really love this premise already. Can't wait to meet this new character and how it's gonna join them. Well, what is the next stop then? Robin, do you see anything yet? Oh, just this island that has been in front of us for a while now. And after all the amazing islands, this one looks like the most boring one ever. It is really funny though how Sop goes from can't set foot on this island fever to feeling so excited that he's the first one out there as well. If he wasn't scared of everything, he would probably be the one with the most adventurous spirit. Well, after Luffy. Actually, it's always those three that get super happy every time they see something new or just with the simplest of things like a prairie. They really do have a kid spirit, which is adorable. Okay, you know what? I take that back. This island is quite interesting. Chopper, your relative. That wasn't even in the manga, but I remember that scene perfectly. And here they meet this old guy, who was stuck on top of those stilts for 10 years. I know Oda loves to make everyone do things for ridiculous amounts of time, but that's just impossible, even for anime logic. But anyways, Tonjit explains to them that this island is called Long Ring Long Land, and once every year the tide that covers the ring subsides and the island becomes connected again. He and his people like to move between the individual islands every three years, but last time they left without him because they couldn't find him. But there was someone who didn't want to abandon him and was trying to find him all this time. His loyal horse, Sherry. She is just the cutest, I love her. And that is too precious. Look at them, doesn't it make your heart happy? And then this happened. Who the hell is responsible for this heartless act? To me, he's just one of those characters that immediately makes you go, ugh, like Wapple or Don Creek, and that you know are just trash. Foxy challenges Luffy to something called the Davy Back fight, and Luffy agrees immediately. I always wondered if Luffy would have agreed knowing what it was. Because I know that for him the most precious thing in the world are his crewmates, so it wouldn't make sense for him to agree to something like that. But I think somehow he would have done it anyways. Because first, he was pissed about the horse and this guy. And two, because he's confident or stupid enough to believe he can win no matter what. 
but I'm glad it was without him knowing because it would have been a little bitter to know he agreed to a game where he was gambling his own companions. It, it would have just felt wrong. You know, even though I don't like what's at stake here, the premise of having the Straw Hats play different games together against other pirates sounds like so much fun. And Robin giving Cotton Candy Chopper was super cute. More of them, please. So, round one, the race. They have to build a boat and complete one lap around the island. That's it. And it's still so funny how Usopp keeps telling them, I'm not a carpenter. While the other two being like, is this gonna sink? It would definitely sink. I love this so much already. And to be honest, I was a little worried about this team selection, but they have Robin. Not like the other two are useless or anything like that, but just given how easily they panic. Just look at Robin. No matter the situation, she's always calm, and it's even funnier in contrast. And let's not forget the fact that she is the one that cannot swim. And come on, the other team has a shark and a fishman. They already lost part of their boat. But here's a little revenge. Every part of this race is so funny, I couldn't stop laughing the whole time. Like when Nami said to Usopp, okay now, swim and pull the boat. Or Usopp's wind dial doing this. Or when Nami said that they will obviously steal her because she is too cute. And Usopp said, I'm cuter. Or when Robin was reading while rowing. I can never get enough of this. I love this series so much. Not everything is lost and Usopp happened to have a secret weapon. The impact dial. I'm loving the Skype influence already. So now Nami asked him to use it over and over again. But it's almost like, are you crazy? One blast almost tore my arm off. It's okay if you get a little torn up. It's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. But can't Robin just throw that girl into the water or something? They can gain at least some time. While the team is struggling so much, Luffy and the rest are not even watching anymore. Thank you for the support. And how Nami was like, I would die of embarrassment if we lose to a bunch of idiots like them. But in the end, well, yeah, they lost. Of course they were going to lose. What fun would have it been if they had won? But they lost because of Foxy's devil fruit powers. He has the ability to slow things down that works for 30 seconds. Honestly, it's a pretty cool ability. And the member he wants is... Chopper. Oh no, not Chopper. Can't blame him with how cute and unique he is. But poor little thing. Well, with two games ahead of us, it's kinda hard being too worried. But of course Chopper was devastated. It was a little heartbreaking. And it would have been okay if it wasn't because he started saying that he sailed to the seas because of them. And because Luffy asked him. Of course I felt bad for him, but Zoro was right. I like how he was basically acting like a dad, telling him that he made the choice to become a pirate and that he is responsible for where he ends up and no one else. So if he's a man, he should stop crying and see this through to the end. Look, we know he can be tactless most of the time, but I think he was right on point on this one. I didn't feel bad for Chopper. And now he and Sanji are in charge of bringing the emergency food back to them, as Sanji puts it. So it's time for round two, the ball game. Wait a second. How come they decided to put these two together in a team? Not complaining, I absolutely love it. But seriously, who thought this was a good idea? This can only mean one thing. This is gonna be fun to watch. Alright, so this time the teams have to put the ball inside the opposite ring and they win. But the ball is actually one of the players. So who's gonna be the ball? Him. And I didn't remember this at all, but one of the opponents is a half-giant, half-fishman. That is... Something. For some reason though, I like how Sanji looks with the ball. I'm serious, not in a mocking kind of way, he looks kind of funny, but cute at the same time. And it's really weird to see Zoro without his swords. He looks so empty and kind of unprotected. Okay, let's start the game already. Too bad they didn't do it with the right foot. Oh boy. Sanji almost gets Princess saved by Zoro. So close. How dare you try to help me? Then stop needing my help. Again, I'm never gonna get tired of this. But the other team is using weapons, and it's not even being subtle about it. I love how this is becoming more and more nonsense as we go. Like, these guys are not even trying to get the ball in anymore. They just want revenge from before. 
My poor beautiful things. Okay, Sanji, I love you too. Forgive me for everything bad I've said about you before. But now they realize something. Yes, the moment they feared the most. They have to cooperate with each other. Look how ecstatic they look. Okay, Sanji's back to action. I feel like it's been a while since I've seen him fight like this. And I don't know what the hell Zoro did, but he used a no sword style attack. Is this related to what he learned in Alabasta? Anyways, look at them working together. What more can one wish for? I love how Zoro can manage even without swords. That just shows how reliable he is. And I also appreciated how Sanji got his revenge on the ref too, with Nami's help. That is teamwork. She never loses her old habits, and I love her for that. And now this moment is pure gold. I know this isn't an important fight or anything like that, but these are the things that I save in my head forever. I think I'm enjoying this arc way too much, but this will always be awesome. I love that scene so much. Now Chopper's back to being a mess. Let him go, you bitch. But before getting Chopper back, this mom is really funny too, because Nami suggests stealing Foxy, so that would mean they have to forfeit. But everyone starts bullying her for suggesting such a dishonorable and unethical way of winning. But what I love about this scene the most is how she goes crying to Robin about it. It's such a cute little moment, but so important as well, as it shows Robin getting closer to them little by little. Besides, they mentioned there's a problem with that plan. Because then they would have to get Foxy in their crew. And yeah, no one wants that. Anyways, of course they get back Chopper. Aww. You know, I usually don't really compare the manga and the anime because I don't really remember what was different. But for this one, I noticed that they made more games in the anime. Because I remember Robin being stolen as well. And I also realized that a lot of cute Robin Chopper moments are only anime originals then. Okay, time for the final round. The combat. A battle of captains. They are so prepared for this. They have a stage and shops with collector's items and foxy pins. That's actually a cool souvenir. Imagine if in the future they randomly find this pin lying around somewhere. It would be so cool. And on the other side, Chopper is taking care of Zoro and Sanji. And I really like how he thanked them both for saving him. And I'm pretty sure Zoro just lets him cure him because he knows how happy it makes him. Okay, on one corner we have Foxy the Silver Fox. And on the other corner, Afro Luffy. Just when I thought this couldn't get any better. And Usopp the Corner Man is priceless too. I love that he's wearing Luffy's hat as well. Luffy looks awesome. Again, not kidding, I think he looks really cool. Let's begin then, so we can see what his powers can do. Truth is, they feel more like he can stop time. Because I don't know if he can slow them at will, or he just has one level. Oh well, whatever. Come on Luffy, stand tall. Remember your training. This arc is really one of a kind. It's the power of the afro. Even Robin thinks so too. The battle itself was a mix of a lot of ridiculous things. Sometimes too much for my liking. But in reality, I wasn't expecting this guy to give Luffy so much trouble. I thought he was just an idiot, but he is tougher than I anticipated. Or more like he has way too many tricks under his sleeve. But he also didn't foresee Luffy's grit and how he would rather die than lose a single member of his crew. And in the end, it was indeed the power of the afro what helped him win. And what a cool way of doing it too. Oh, how the tables have turned. Now that he won, he has to decide who he wants from Fox's crew. But Luffy didn't pick anyone, because that's not why he accepted the challenge. He did it for the old guy and the horse. So he took their jolly Roger instead. It makes sense. He didn't want to win anything from this. That's very sweet of him. And also a relief. Imagine having a random soul in pirate character as the new member. Okay, bye Foxy guys. To be honest, I didn't hate him that much in the end. He started to grow on me just a little. Not that I ever want to see him again, but somehow for a character type that I usually get annoyed with and that are not funny to me, I did laugh more than I expected. And maybe that I'm willing to admit. Back at the old man's house, they run into this weird super tall guy. It's kind of fitting with the island though. And Robin's reaction was so shocking. Because I've never seen Robin like that. No one has. So that's why they put their guard up immediately. Like I said before, she's always calm and keeps her composure, no matter what. 
So to see her like that, I was like, okay, okay, who the hell is this guy? Danger, danger. His name is Aokiji, and he is an admiral from the Navy. The highest rank of the Navy is the Supreme Commander Fleet Admiral Sengoku, and after him come the admirals. And they are only three. Aokiji, Akainu, and Kisaru. So the world government calls them their ultimate military force, or the greatest power in the Navy. And he is one of them. I found it so funny that Usopp was all defensive mode moments ago, but after hearing this, he was suddenly hiding behind Zoro. But this guy just tells him to chill. He's not on duty, and he's just taking a walk. More like he wanted to verify where Robin was after disappearing from Alabasta, and also get a glimpse of Luffy. So he basically didn't tell anyone where he was going. They're actually looking for him. So what kind of admiral is he? He also happened to hear the conversation before and wants to help the old guy reach the rest of the villagers. But Luffy was like, don't listen to this guy, he's with the navy. Isn't that a good thing? Oh, right. And the way he's planning to make it happen is like this. Oh my god, yes, I knew it was a matter of time before this fruit appeared. Ice, ice baby. Like, if I could choose a devil fruit, it would be this one. Even though it's my second favorite. I can see why he's an admiral now. So I guess he is a good guy then. Because now both of them can cross and reunite with the others. You know, I really like that old man. He was super funny and the horse was super cute too. Well, everything seems to be good then. Except Aokiji changed his mind. I'm getting nervous. This guy makes me nervous. Wh weren't you just taking a walk? Let's not do anything rash here. He saw the potential this crew has and decided it was better to eliminate them now before they become a threat. He also knows all about them and how quickly their strength has grown and it's starting to frighten him. I mean, that makes sense to be honest. He is smart after all. There is also a lot of information thrown at us that's kind of hard to process right now. He mentioned that there isn't a single decent fella in Luffy's whole family, and he seems to know his grandpa too. Luffy has family, apart from Ace, and he got so nervous when his grandpa was mentioned, to whom Aokiji owed a debt to long ago. He also said that he and Nico Robin go way back, and he let her escape once. Now Robin's reaction makes more sense. And told them that a bounty doesn't only reflect the strength of the criminal, but also the level of threat it has to the government. That's why Robin had such a high one when she was only 8 years old, and that she has been using and betraying people since then. So he's basically warning them to get away from her unless they want to get destroyed like everyone she has ever been involved with. Okay, 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 dude, chill, no pun intended. True, we still don't know the truth about her past. And given how she met them, of course, there is the question of, can we really trust her? Is she really one of them? She only joined because after Luffy saved her, she had nowhere to go. And we know her real purpose is to find the truth about the world history. So is she really going to betray them if her objective gets compromised? But Luffy doesn't care about her past. It's kind of the same to when he didn't have to listen to Nami's backstory for him to help her. And now seeing this guy insulting Robin was really starting to piss him off. Because he was kind of crossing the line. But surprisingly, it was Robin the first one to lose it. Oh crap. Okay, I was actually starting to panic a little too. How cool is the ice saber though? And Zoro, I love you so much. But he didn't even seem bothered by the three of them attacking at the same time. The ice power is so awesome. I want to see more. The moment that really got to me, though, is when he said to her, you've met some really nice allies. However, you are the same old Nico Robin. And she said, you're wrong. I am. And then she got completely frozen. But she said it. That's all I needed to hear. Of course, I really wanted to know her past after these two. But for now, that's all the reassurance I need to know that if she was ever like he's describing, she has changed. I mean, we've all seen it from Miss All Sunday to this. How can this be an evil monster? Must protect at all cost. But my god, I was stressed when I saw this. How could this arc take such a 180 degree change so fast? 
Luffy ordered Usopp and Chopper to take Robin to the ship, and Sanji and Zoro to stay out of this, to then challenge Aokiji to a one-on-one -on -one battle. With this, he secured everyone's safety. He was obviously gonna go all at it, but he probably knew he could lose, and if Aokiji agrees and then wins the battle, it's over, and laying a hand on the others will be breaking his word. This is why he is the best captain, putting always the safety of his crew before anything else. But he indeed was completely overpowered in seconds, and Aokiji only spared his life because he said he owes him for taking care of Crocodile. What? I don't know if he meant he had some unsolved business with him, or maybe because since he was one of the seven warlords of the seas, he couldn't touch him being part of the navy, and he just doesn't like that system at all. But I think he just fell under Luffy's charm, and that was just an excuse. I don't totally hate this guy, I don't know why. He is kind of intriguing. At least he seems to follow his own ethic, and it's not that much of a Navy's dog. But he kept insulting Robin, that's unforgivable. Saying that she was born with a brutal personality, and that she will be more than what he can handle. What can she possibly have done for this guy to have such a ruthless impression of her? Like, we all saw her as Miss All Sunday, but she wasn't that bad. And then finally he left. On his bike? That looks cool and all, but it also looks very tiring for a guy that said his motto was lazy justice. Just saying. Back to the ship, Chopper and Usopp are desperately trying to unfreeze Robin, both yelling at each other. Chopper knowing that as the ship's doctor, he cannot fail because Robin's life is at stake here. The others return as well, Usopp questioning them why they left him alone, Sanji telling him it was captain's orders, and to understand what one-on-one -on -one means. They are all kind of hysterical, and with good reason. Sora even saying, be prepared for the worst. How could you could have ended the story right here? Thank god he didn't. They take Luffy completely frozen back to the ship, and after a few moments, Chopper comes out of the room and tells them they are both breathing. Suddenly, we are outside the operation room of a medical drum. I was a little like Usopp here, and I didn't notice how tense the whole situation actually got me. After this, they decide that they are not gonna sail just yet, because Luffy and Robin need to rest. Aw, oh, this reminds me of when Nami was sick and everyone was sleeping next to her. And so, we are left with a very unusual arc finale, especially seeing this face from Robin. This arc was surprisingly a fun one. I mean, a whole arc focused on just the crew playing games and spending time together? Are you kidding me? It was awesome! Sign me up anytime for anything Straw Hat Screw related. Nami, Sanji and Robin looked great as well, and in general I was so happy to have such a light storyline after the intense long arc that was Skypey. I mean, maybe this plot wasn't meant to be taken that lightly, but just seeing Foxy as the main antagonist, I knew that I shouldn't worry and just relax and enjoy. Truth be told, up until the Aokiji part, this arc could have perfectly been filler even. I'm glad it wasn't and that things like this can be canon as well. Okay, but what a way of turning things around in just three chapters. That's why it felt so intense, too much in such a short period of time. I love Robin. Like I've been mentioning recently, she has been slowly becoming one of my favorite characters and I'm interested in everything related to her. So I'm really looking forward to cover the next arcs. Because here I felt like Awagiji really brought us back to reality and that there are people after them and that Robin still has a lot of mystery surrounding her that we have yet to discover. Also, seeing the whole crew like that, just snapping at each other really agitated and about to lose everything, was really terrifying. Of course I wouldn't consider this arc in the top One Piece arcs or anything like that, especially since it's just a transitional one, but I did enjoy the contrast of the games putting us in such a goofy mood to them being slapped in the face with what I think is one of the best introductions to a new important character because of how quickly and unexpectedly it was able to turn around the tone of the arc. And let's not forget that now they have two new objectives in mind. Find a shipwright to do some big repairs on the Mary, and find a carpenter to join their crew. So next time I will continue with the Water 7 arc, a really special one for sure. If you are new here, I'm making a review from every One Piece arc, 
So if you want to check the others out, take a look in this playlist over here or in the video description where I will leave all the links. Thanks for watching and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. See you in the next video.